Hey folks, Matthew Weiss here, WeissAdvice.com, and here with Produce Like a Pro. Thanks for joining me. In this video, we are going to be talking about mixing with emotion and finding intention. Now, there are a lot of videos that cover a lot of techniques but there aren't a lot of videos that cover why we use these techniques. I want to give you some examples of exactly that. There's a lot of videos on how to start a mix, right? There's videos on top-down mixing, where you start from the master and you treat the master and then you start getting into smaller and smaller micromanagerial parts of the track. That's a great way to go. Some people will start the mix from the vocal. They'll make the lead vocal the centerpiece and build everything around that mix, and guess what? That's also a great way to go. And some people will start from the rhythm section, particularly the low end, and they'll build the foundation for the record, and then they'll start to place everything on top of it, and guess what? That is also a great way to go. I don't do any of those things, though. I start from the part of the song that gives me the most inspiration, the part of the song to me that sets the emotional tone and intention for the record. And I'm going to give you an example right here. So I'm going to play the record uh, without any of my hook vocal treatment on it, but everything else is going to be on. I'm just going to play the chorus here. So, in this record, there's a lot of places we could begin. We could start with the 808. The 808 has a great personality to it. We could start with the vocal. The vocal has a lot of personality to it. But where I started was with this sample. And the reason is because I feel like this sample gives me the idea for the overall record. There's this sort of sense of almost like creepiness to it, like a, a sort of murderousness to it. There's an aggression to it. There's a grit to it, a dustiness to it. Uh, you might say a sense of mystery to it, depending on how you want to interpret it. How you want to interpret it is going to be who you are as an engineer or producer. But for me, I heard like a lot of grittiness, a lot of aggression. And so when I started, I started with this sample it sounded like this. And so a lot of that grit and aggression wasn't necessarily there inherent to the sound. It was really dark, kind of rolled off. And to me, the music itself felt like it had that, that aggression and that menacingness to it. So I wanted to bring that out. So one of the things I wanted to do was make the strings a lot more obvious. So I'm using some pretty heavy compression here. Let's turn this guy up a little bit just so we can hear it better. Do a little before and after action. It's really just bringing the strings forward a little bit more, and then I'm using OTT, over-the-top compression here, uh, pretty, pretty aggressively, and that's what's going to bring out a lot of the grit. This is definitely not a clean-sounding compressor by any stretch. It really hypes things up and, and adds a lot of grain, so here we go. also brightens everything up tremendously. We hear all of the overtones of the strings, and suddenly, now all of that menace and all of that aggression is present and there. So we're getting the tone of the record we're looking for. A little compensation EQ here. This is really uh, done after all the other elements were brought in, and I need to make some, some compensations here, taking out some low end, some sub, and then brightening a little bit further. <laughs> But basically, the brighter this gets, the more strident it gets, the more harsh it gets, the more aggressive it gets. And normally, stridency and harshness is something we want to avoid. But because of the nature of this record, bringing out harshness actually works here. So this is why it's so important to identify the emotional intention of a record, because if we're just trying to mix to make things sound good, we probably wouldn't want to make things sound harsh. But here, harshness is our friend. And then lastly, just rolling off some super treble. 
basically once the tone is set for the sample, then I can start sculpting the rest of the elements around that idea. So I know how crunchy I want to make my 808 versus how clean I would want my 808. How do I want the kick drums to sound? Do I want them to sound really saturated and broken up or do I want them to sound really punchy and clean and coming through the mix like really crisp? And so I went over to the lead vocal for the hook after that and this is how things came in. Feels like still a slave in the field, still in the field, nigga. Not a rap nigga slave to a deal. Public house in, can't afford bills. So it's a decent recording. If I solo it up, you know, it sounds pretty clean. Feels like still a slave in the field. I have a couple other effects just kind of tidying things. Feels like still a slave in the field. Not a rap nigga slave to a deal. Public house in, can't afford bills. So if I was doing this with no aim or direction, I'd probably clean out some mid-range, maybe put a little bit of shine in the top end, round things out a little bit, you know, make it sound really nice. But I have an intention for this record, so I'm not going to do the typical techniques that we would do for just make a vocal sound better, right? I have a very distinct idea. So what I'm doing here first, I'm going to be bringing in Metatune. I went back and forth between Autotune and Metatune. Uh, Autotune is Antares, Metatune is Slate, and they have different sounds, but really, ultimately, the thing that left me sold on Metatune is the ability to hit these, like, very, very fast negative retune speeds. Feels like still a slave in a field. Like, if you want to get glitchy and synthy, Metatune is really, really cool for that. So, on the word field, for example, you'll hear this, like, really dirty robot kind of effect. Feels like still a slave in a field. I like that. That's That feels really grungy. So then, speaking of grunge, we move on to the next effect. Now this is a reverb, typically, but it also has convolutions of distortions. It's under a section marked effects and then under colors. And if I take the dry signal all the way down and push this up... Feels like still a slave in a field. Not a rap nigga slay to a deal. Public house inc... And so it's just this weird filmy quality that I'm m kind of moving into the sound that ends up sounding like this. Let's jump over here. Public house in can't afford bills. Do stamps how mama made meals. Public house in can't afford bills. Do stamps how mama made meals. So it almost gives it like this kind of like eight millimeter grain like the way eight millimeter film looks is the way that sounds to me and then doing a little bit more to, to grunge things up here bringing out the rc20 retro color right here putting noise into it putting wobble into it putting distortion into it you can see i've got the distortion turned all the way up but i've got the mix knob turned pretty low and here's our before and after on that public house in can't afford bills do stamps how mama made meals Public house in, can't afford bills. Do stamps how mama made meals. So again, just pull in a little bit more grain, subtle amounts of grain, then a little bit of EQ here that's going to bring out the, those aggressive mids. Aggressive mids that on a lot of vocals I'd probably want to be cutting. Public house in, can't afford bills. Do stamps how mama made meals. All right, starts to bring out some of that grain quality too. Uh, some fairly aggressive compression with an 1176. Public house in, can't afford bills. Do stamps how mama made meals. It doesn't say it's doing a lot of gain reduction, but it sounds pretty aggressive to me. Like, we definitely hear it. Uh, this is actually to provide body. This is this is a, not really a distortion. It is a distortion plugin, but I'm not using it as a distortion plugin. This is just to make the vocal feel a little fuller. Public house in, can't afford bills. Do stamps how mama made meals. And then a de at the end here. Public house in, can't afford bills. Do stamps how mama made meals. And then my last cleanup effects. Public house in, can't afford bills. Do stamps how mama made meals. And then when I do that for all of the vocals, they all stack up to sound like this. Public house in, can't afford bills. Do stamps how mama made meals. So they definitely have a very distinct affected sound to them. There's a lot of grit, there's a lot of grunge. It's not the way you would typically mix a vocal if you were trying to make it sound good. Public house in, can't afford bills. Do stamps how mama made meals. You didn't hear that little bit of noise at the very end. Public house in, can't afford bills. Do stamps how mama made meals. That's what we have for dinner. 
but it complements the idea of the record. So it's not so important that it sounds good. Good doesn't really mean much. What's important is that it sounds emotionally intentional. It sounds menacing. It sounds mean, and it creates that feeling. And that's really, really what's going to help sell this record. Uh, I want to put out one more thing before wrapping this up. And that's the effects that I gave the ad libs because with the ad libs I went even a little bit further. Can't afford bills. Slay to a deal. Can't afford bills. So I've got that same sort of filminess going on, although in a slightly different way. But then I've also got this really weird, strange reverb that almost feels like there's noise in the reverb, like white noise being bust into it. And that's pretty much exactly what it is. It's a um, a uh, preset from my Eventide DSP-7000 called Desert Wind, and it's a mixture of noise generation and long reverb, and it creates this, like, very... It's hard to put a word into it, but the music has that kind of, like, Middle Eastern-ish sort of vibe to it, and and that, like, grain and grit, and I feel like having this sort of deserty wind sound actually really helps to complement that idea. Slay to a deal. Can't afford bills. So when we hear it in the record. Basically, not all of this stuff is easy to put into words because they're emotional ideas. It ultimately comes down to feeling right, but when it feels right, that is what the end listener is going to gravitate towards. So before we ever talk about any kind of techniques, we always have to get into the mindset of what we're really trying to accomplish, what emotions we're trying to evoke, and then the techniques that we choose to use come from that. Okay, I need something that has grit. I'm going to use distortion techniques. I need something that has some kind of mystery quality to it. Okay, reverb techniques, maybe. Uh, it needs to have some aggressiveness to it. Okay, handling the upper mids. Let's get some aggression out of the upper mids. Let's handle the distortion to get some aggression in there. These are the thought processes that really, I believe, make really step the line over from being good mixes to great mixes finding that emotional intention following through completing that idea all right guys i want to wrap this video up by saying thank you so much for joining me if you like this video hit that like button if you dig what we're doing here on produce like a pro hit the subscribe with the bell notification and lastly i have a little saying goes like this we are musicians sound is our instrument and i'll catch you next time